We're continuing tonight in a series of messages on the revelatory ministry of Christ's miracles. That is, in Christ's miracles, we're given to see and understand something of Christ and of his wonderful ministry. The miracles of Jesus are a sort of prelude to his ultimate purpose when he came into the world, which is John stated in 1 John 3, 8, the destroy the works of the devil. Yes, amen. The works of the devil particularly as regards mankind. Mm -hmm. He didn't destroy the works of the devil in the sense of undoing what he did when he deceived angelic hosts. Right. That was not... Jesus didn't come to address fallen angels, the problem of fallen angels, but to uh, reverse what Satan had done to humanity. Mm -hmm. Or shall I say to be more accurate, to lift men higher than Satan can work. Yeah, amen. He, uh, he destroys the works of the devil by removing the guilt of sin mm -hmm. and by elevating man into an environment where Satan can't enter or work. Mm -hmm. Now this is demonstrated very clearly, we say overtly or outwardly, in Christ's miracles. He confronted people that were utterly helpless in their situation. They range, these helpless situations ranged all the way from having a disease and affliction to people being dead, to people having children that were dead, to uh, creeping diseases like leprosy that advanced and advanced and advanced until finally they consumed the people. But in all of these, Jesus, when he removed these, was showing you a depiction of what salvation is. Salvation does not leave you the same way as you were when he confronted you. Amen. One of the great uh, areas of confusion to the world is that the professed church doesn't look all that much more different than the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is a point of serious, serious confusion. Because if, if this is the case, that people in Christ are fundamentally no different than anyone else, then Jesus' mission has failed. Because he came to destroy the works of the devil. Also, you notice his miracles were always effective. He never failed. There was never a lapse back into the former condition. And this is showing us the nature of salvation. Now tonight, we're going to deal with the a cluster of miracles that are not specified at all of them. The individuals aren't named. They're just a cluster of miracles that occurred in Galilee. And the text is found in Matthew, the 15th chapter, and uh, verses 29 through 31. And Jesus departed from thence and came nigh unto the Sea of Galilee and went up into a mountain and sat down there. And great multitudes came unto him, <coughs> having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. Insomuch that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb speak, and the maimed to behold, the lame to walk, and the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. Yeah, no person on earth would have reported it that way. This, mm -hmm. would, this would have taken up a, several columns in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. But you will notice how, how the Spirit sort of accentuates Christ here. There are some times when who Christ helps isn't really the point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's sometimes it's just Him. He's the, he's the point. And so here in this, uh, in this text is a, another one of those clusters of miracles. We'll deal with a few more instances of them in, in Scripture. The background of this is he had just healed the daughter of that Syrophoenician woman who was far, who was following him, called, calling out unto him, and he ignored her. You remember, he just ignored her and moved along. And in the due process of time, he told her it wasn't appropriate to take the children's bread and give it to dogs. He had only been sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and uh, unimpeded by this answer, the woman said, "This is true. Everything you say is true." But uh, even the dogs eat the crumbs of the table. He healed the woman's daughter and forthwith left the area. Mm -hmm. Now he left Galilee and went into Tyre and Sidon. Mm -hmm. And he went in there to find this woman. And as soon as, he, as she was, uh, her case was addressed, he went back. Mm -hmm. 
Now, Jesus is like this, you know. Sometimes he just goes out for one person, he comes back. Mm -hmm. He didn't go throughout all the coast of Tyre and Sidon and working great signs and wonders. He, he didn't do this. Mm -hmm. He just went over there, found one person, just like he did in Gadara, came back where he was before, mm -hmm. immediately. That acts as a very comforting thought. If you are having... Uh, uh, difficulties that you wish the Lord would address, the Lord can leave, speaking as a man, can leave an area and just come minister to you and then go mm -hmm. go back and leave you in a great state yes. of joy. Amen. Amen. This can actually happen. Amen. Let's look at the circumstances of this, uh, this miracle. They look on the surface to be rather common, but they're not. He, uh, he came along the Sea of Galilee. That is, he walked along the shore. He walked along. This is Jesus now. You might look on the surface as though he was doing nothing a little more than sightseeing, but he, but he wasn't. He was preparing for something. I envision Jesus here as, as being in prayer and supplication and pondering the mission the Father had sent him on. He's walking along the, along the sea, and in due process of time, he, he goes up into a mountain and, and sits down. And so, so that if people wanted to get to him, they had to climb a mountain. And go up to him. They couldn't stand out at the foot of the mountain and call him down. They had to go where he was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this, in a sense, is the nature of Christ's ministry. The Lord insists that you go where he is. Yes. He came where you are, but then he went up to a mountain, so to speak. He elevated himself above the mundane or the normal. He sat down in the mountain, and it says a great multitude. Now, all that's involved there, I don't know, but it is very impressive to me. Mm -hmm. In that part of the world, multitude means something different than here, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. Great multitudes went up that mountain where he was seated. Must have been inconvenient. Yeah. Scripture says they took a great multitude of sick folk with them. Must have been hard to get them up that, yeah. up that mountain. I don't question many people had to carry somebody. Assist them getting up there. Every two or three joined in carrying some palsied person. Some of these people were maimed. <coughs> he took them up to the top of this mountain where Jesus was sitting. And they, Scripture says they cast him down at his feet. It was they laid him at his feet. I, just, I can only kind of picture what this, what this must have been. They did uh, on the mountain what those four men did in the house. They let the man down at Jesus' feet. Right there, because there seemed to be a sense in the people that if you could get Jesus' eye, you could get his power. Amen. Yeah. If you could get him to look at you and pay attention to you. Amen. You'd get some benefit from him. So they laid him down at his at his feet. And that's uh, that's sort of the picture here. A, a general unspecified number of miracles. Now there's a, about seven accounts of this in scripture. Seven accounts where a lot of people were healed without any focus being on anyone in particular. There was just a, like everybody in the assembly was helped and but nobody in particular is mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. there, were, there were seven different times when this happened and this is quite, uh, quite more, uh, seven different times this is recorded to be more exact. Yeah. John 2.23 during the Passover feast now, when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover in the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles. Yes. The miracles. Yes. Which he did. So here's a, on the Passover, what a Passover feast that must have been. Uh -huh. Can you imagine the people that made their way that, that year to the Passover? Amen. And what they saw, they just saw the miracles mm. that he did. You can just get where Jesus is. It's yes. just not sure something will something will transpire that will be yeah. beneficial to you. Matthew eight sixteen. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. He cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. That's just <laughs> that's Jesus. Sometimes it's a general blessing for everybody. Just come, come, come and welcome into the presence of the Lord Jesus. Another instance, Matthew 4, 24, And his fame spread throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people, 
that were taken with diverse diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had palsy, and he healed them. See, there's never been a healing meeting like this. Uh -huh. right. There's people that have meetings where they profess to heal people, and I don't question that they do, but they've never been on this man. Never been on this man. Mm -hmm. How large this was. This is... He's telling you that Jesus, when he came to do a great work, Jesus didn't come to do little bitty things. Yeah. Things that are small consequence. Jesus came to do a great work, and sometimes he just involved just masses of people. Just being, He healed them all. That's just the way he was. Luke 7, 21, here's another instance. And at the same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind he gave sight. Just... <laughs> There's some grand occasion. See, how could this? You could not report this in a newspaper like this. They want particulars about this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who was it? How far did they come? What was the nature of the disease? How long had it been like that? Well, there's sometimes and this isn't the point. Yeah. Other times it is the point. She had an issue of blood 12 years. That was a point, see? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is the point. My little daughter is ill, see, and dying. Sometimes that is the point. But there's other times when it's... When really you're not the point. You're not the point at all. The point is who did it, not what he did. And that's sort of what he's pointing out here. Matthew 14, 14. Here's another instance. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and is moved with compassion toward them and he healed our sick. Mm -hmm. They didn't even come for this purpose. Yeah. He just saw he just saw them and just had compassion on them mm -hmm. and healed their sick. Matthew 14, 35 and 36. When the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all that country round about, brought unto him all that were diseased, and besought him that they might touch only the hem of his garment, and as many as touched were made perfectly whole. How's that for one grand, grand occasion? Mm -hmm. And then our text here tonight, great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were blind, uh, lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and many, and many others. Mm -hmm. And cast them at Jesus' feet and he healed them. So there's at least seven different times mm -hmm. when Jesus just dealt with this mass mercy. Mm -hmm. Just had compassion on them. Now, only Jesus can do this. Right. Most people, even if they have gifts of healing, the Lord has placed that in the church, he said, at his discretion, gifts of healing. Mm -hmm. None, none, none of them, so far as I know, all through the book of Acts, none of them were quite like this. Mm -hmm. This was unique. The giver is, does things greater than the gifts, let me tell you. Yeah. And he just sort of stationed this in the scriptures so you realize that you really ought to expect some benefit when you're close to Jesus, even though you may appear to be lost in the masses. Mm -hmm. Now here's Jesus, you want to see, he went from healing... <clears throat> One daughter of one woman, and right on the heels of that, he's healing multitudes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. How versatile, marvelously versatile he is. Amen. He can just focus on one person, go over to Tyre and side and focus on one, one girl or one mother and heal her and then come back in masses. Mm -hmm. He deals with masses and heals them. And divine workings, they're personal. They are personal, but they're not confined to a solitary focus. Mm -hmm. Maybe the Lord sometime will mention your case and you will become more known because of what God's done for you. Maybe some other time nobody will really know that he did very much for you. You know, you know he's done a great work in you. Maybe it's not as visible as you would like to have it, but that's, that's the Lord's manner. Sometimes he blessed just because you were there. You might be a seas by a seaside in a boat mm -hmm. teaching. He could bless you there. It might be on a mountaintop like here. He bless you. It might be in a graveyard mm -hmm. like the gathering demoniac and he bless you. It might be out in the middle of the lake with a storm going on. He blesses you. The poor, wherever Jesus is, yeah. if you can be there, it'll bless you. Sometimes Amen. he was in a synagogue and people were blessed. In particular, I want to examine briefly here the diversity of these diseases because they were all a depiction of sin and the ravages sin has wrought on the human race. I do not think that due, a due explanation of the effects of sin has been made in a modern society. 
there seems to be an understatement of how sinful people are and how sin has impacted the entire human personality and all its abilities. It doesn't seem to be generally known. But there was the, it was seen in these diseases, these diverse uh -huh. diseases. It wasn't just that Jesus came and like specialized in leprosy. Mm -hmm. Well, he was a specialist in blindness or deafness mm -hmm. or dumbness. Well, he seemed to focus more on demon-possessed people or people that were palsied. Yeah. See, this Jesus is not a specialist in certain kind of conditions. He's a heavenly specialist in all conditions. Amen. Amen. Right. Diverse, sometimes the afflictions of people were called diverse diseases. That's different, many different kinds. Sometimes they were called, John 6, 2, he referred to them as the diseased. Mm -hmm. Just kind of a general. Other time, Matthew 4, 23 says all manner of sickness and disease. So just whatever kind of disease had afflicted people, whatever kind of infirmity, I mean, Jesus was fully equal to it. And this is telling you about his ministry to sin. See, whatever the effects of sin... Upon a person, some people have lost their thinking capacity. Some people descend into moral, a moral chaos and commit reprehensible, especially reprehensible sins. Some, some people, they, they just they're crooked in their thinking all the time. Uh, and I want to show this the different <coughs> impact, impact that sin has upon people. Now, that one category of people they brought to him were the people that were lame. Lame people. They had people that couldn't walk. Matthew 15, 30 in our text says that he brought, they brought the lame to him. Matthew 4, 24 also mentions the lame that they brought to him. And he, uh, he healed them. He healed them, the lame. Now there's a, there's a certain lameness that sin has created where man can't walk right. And scripture walk right is live. Can't live right. They're, they're spiritually lame. Yes. If the Lord tells them go here, they can't, they can't go there. They can't navigate in holy realms. They, they can't walk. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 4.17 says this, This I say then therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles in the vanity of their mind. Yes. See, they're just, as they say in the world, they're spiritually spaced out. They just, yeah, yeah. They just can't live toward God. Uh -huh. they, they can't do it. Sin has this effect. Okay, yeah. Sin makes you so you can't walk where, where God insists that you walk. Mm -hmm. You just blunder and stumble. That's, sin does this mm -hmm. to people. Lame. <coughs> Sometimes there's this, uh, we're lame in certain areas. It's hard, hard to navigate in certain spiritual areas that you, you know you should do, but it's very difficult for you to do. What I want to encourage your heart with is Jesus can address Amen. that Amen. situation. Amen. So you can walk and keep your balance and stay in high, treacherous terrain without falling. And they brought to him some blind, blind people. And uh, our text says that they noticed how, how the blind could see. Mm -hmm. A blind person that can see conducts himself quite different than yes. when he was blind. Now there's a sort of spiritual blindness that happens as a result of sin. Mm -hmm. When sin infected humanity, they couldn't see God in creation. Yeah. Once you see him in creation, it seems real evident to you, but you surely should remember when it wasn't so evident to you. Mm -hmm. They can't see their own condition. <laughs> They can't see the remedy. They can't see dangers. They walk right into them. They can't see temptation coming and stumble and blunder into it. They can't see. They can't understand Scripture when they hear it. They can't comprehend the nature of things. They, they're blind and can't see. Mm -hmm. Scripture accounts for this blindness in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, in whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine into them. Mm -hmm. I remember when this was a point. This was a point of 
particular interest to me that two people could sit and listen to the same word from God, one person leap for joy and the other go to sleep uh -huh. and go home and think nothing of it. Uh -huh. What was the difference between the two people? Uh -huh. It wasn't that one was smart and one was dumb. Uh -huh. One was gifted and one wasn't. One was blind. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. they, they, couldn't, they couldn't see what was being said. Sin has this effect. When you come across people, church people, and they just can't understand. Mm -hmm. They seem to, don't seem to know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. It's because they're blind. Amen. That's why. It's not because the things of God are too deep. It's because mm -hmm. they're blind. Mm -hmm. That's what the trouble is. That's right. mm -hmm. Jesus came to deal with that situation. There's no need for anybody in Christ's presence to remain <laughs> blind. And then there's people that are dumb. They can't speak. <laughs> they can't say the right thing. They can't speak to anyone's prophet. Mm -hmm. They're dumb. Speechless. Scripture says they brought the dumb to him. A great multitude came to him braving with them those that were dumb. Mm -hmm. Couldn't speak. They're like their tongue tied. They couldn't speak praise to God. They couldn't give thanks to God. They couldn't even address seeking God. They, mm -hmm. they couldn't speak. Jesus came to address that remedy. Amen. Address that with his remedy. Romans 3.13 says of natural man. It's unborn again. Their throat is an open sepulcher. Their tongues they've used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips. I mean, what comes out of their mouth is like damaging. You probably experience this. You will hear people with on the media. They will speak, and are you to listen to what they said and contaminate the mainstream of your thought? Uh -huh. If you were to give an ear to them, their their speaking is affected yes. by sin. Yes. The prophet said that time was going to come when, when the Lord would loose the tongues of men, and the stammerer would speak plainly and yeah. be able to say the things of God. As you go in Christ Jesus, it will amaze you, you how God will affect how you talk, mm -hmm. particularly about the things of God. I've noticed, and with some degree of disappointment among certain people, that when we talk about the things of God, they just, they can't join in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they just can't say anything at any time. They're dumb. Well, Jesus came to correct that yep. condition. Sin affects how people talk. And it said that our text said they brought to him so, a great multitudes, having with them those who were maimed. Mm -hmm. Maimed is to be uh, crippled. Their hands don't work or the feet don't work. They're, they're not totally paralyzed, but they just can't move about and can't get hold of anything. They, uh, they're maimed. Well, the Word of God speaks of a spiritual maiming where people just can't take hold. They yeah. just somehow can't get a hold of the things of God. Here's how Isaiah put it, Isaiah 64, 7. There is none that calleth upon thy name that stirreth up himself to take hold of thee. <laughs> can't, mm -hmm. can't find some word from God. They can't find it that will speak to their condition. He, they can't take hold of the promises of Christ. They, they can't take hold of the commitments to, of grace. They can't get hold of it. They, they're crippled, spiritually crippled, and maimed. Yeah. See, sin does that to people. Yes. yes. That's what causes that to happen. Yes. And Jesus came to correct that mm -hmm. disorder so people could take hold of things and so they could run and not be weary. Amen. See? Jesus right. came to do that. Another affliction that they brought to him, you see how diverse the effects of sin uh -huh. are, were torments. Some taken with torments. Matthew 4.24 also mentions people that were disease, had diseases and torments, tortured from within. Mm -hmm. All this involved in torments, I, I don't know. It, it's a very very broad category, but I gather this were things where they're very troubled in mind and yeah. distraught, mm -hmm. and their thoughts were falling apart, and they were in misery, mm -hmm. and couldn't be comforted in torments, see? In fact, you've had an experience of torments, 
something just you couldn't get away from it. It was afflicted you from within and mm -hmm. it was something you couldn't think through it and you couldn't resolve it and it just tormented you. Well, they brought these, yeah. these kind of people to Jesus. Romans 2.15 speaks of a kind of a torment which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness in their thoughts, the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. See, this is an accusing conscience and an accusing thoughts are like torments mm -hmm. that people can't contend with. There are a lot of people that are very uh, dissatisfied with their sinful condition, but it, it, it never gets beyond tormenting them. They, mm -hmm. some, they somehow can't get up out of it. There's some people even take their lives. They're so tormented they take their lives. They commit, commit suicide, self-murder, because they're tormented. Some people just give up. They get tormented and just give up. I've known spiritual leaders that became so tormented because of the condition of people they were ministering to, they just gave up. They couldn't, couldn't hold up on it anymore. Well, see, sin does that to people. Yes. It's tormenting. <coughs> Satan's not kind to his children. Makes no mistake right, about right. it. Tortured within. Jesus came to resolve that and give this is the opposite of peace. Peace I give us. That's the opposite of torment. You imagine what would have happened to Peter if Jesus hadn't have forgiven him? How that would have tormented him? In fact, it no doubt did torment him for a while that he had denied Christ. Yes. Someone once said he betrayed Christ. Did you, Peter didn't betray Christ. He denied mm -hmm. Christ. He denied that he knew him. How that tormented. That would be tormenting. Uh -huh. Or how it must have tormented Thomas when he thought back about it. He said, I'm not going to believe unless I see put my finger in the wounds. I'm not going to believe. Can you imagine how that could have tormented mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a man who recalled his utter stupidity the night he saw Jesus and fell before him and said, Oh, my Lord and my God. See, Jesus came to correct that yes. kind of torment. I thank God for it. Mm -hmm. Amen. You've been delivered from a lot of torments. Amen. Believe, believe Amen. Me. And there were some that were possessed of demons. Mm -hmm. They were dominated. Matthew 4.24 says, They brought to him many that were taken with diverse diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with demons, mm -hmm. controlled by someone other than themselves. Right. And some people boast of free will, but these people couldn't boast. That's right. <laughs> God has made all men free. These people, they couldn't say that. Mm -hmm. Don't be bragging a lot about being free. Let me tell you, there are yeah. people, that, there's, there's forces that work out there that can take your freedom from you. Yeah, that's right. And that's they right. can dominate you and throw you in the fire whenever they want, throw you in the water whenever they want, mm -hmm. and do like they did to that Gadarene lunatic where they made him run through the mountains and cut himself with stones and live in the tombs. A person can be possessed, mm -hmm. dominated mm -hmm. by another spirit, not the least of which is the devil himself. So they brought, uh, they brought these dominated mm -hmm. souls to Jesus. Why? Well, there wasn't anyone who could do anything about it. The psychiatrist can't help a person who's possessed by some evil spirit. Right. Can't be. It can't be helped by Jesus. You can because these spirits are subject to Christ. Yes. Let me tell you something. Some people have a lot of trouble obeying Jesus. Humanity stands like a kind of alone in this viewpoint. I'm having a great deal of difficulty being obedient, but not even Satan and the demons have any trouble here. Mm -hmm. They all respond first time, all the time. First time Jesus says, Go, they go. Mm -hmm. First time he says it's over, it's over. And these people knew we can't do anything about this condition. But Jesus can. Amen. Now here, here's a picture of someone that was dominated by someone else, delivered by Jesus. This is Ephesians 2 2. And where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Now, how Satan worked in each of us before we were in Christ, it may differ according to appearance, but it was still him. Mm -hmm. Some people fell in the drug culture, some people fell in the alcohol culture, some people fell in the business 
culture of covetousness. There's <laughs> different, different evidences uh -huh, uh -huh. of being controlled. But see, we, the truth of the matter is, we were all dominated by the prince of the power of the air. That's right. Yes. And he worked in us. Jesus came Amen. to free us. See, sin dominates. If you don't have a Savior, you can't conquer sin. Yes. Amen. You can't do it. Only Christ can conquer sin. Mm -hmm. Came to destroy the works of the devil. And there were some who were lunatic. Lunatic. These are people that are... The word used here is the word we get epilepsy from. I'm not sure that it's confined to epilepsy. But the idea is that it was seasonally they lost control seasonally would come upon them once in a while. They brought to him those that were lunatic. Matthew 4.24 says. Now there are people who, uh, who suffer from these bouts of being controlled mm -hmm. by the wicked one. Some of them are mentioned in 2 Timothy 2.26. These are people who are overcome said that they they are be ministered to so they can recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. So seasonally the Lord, devil just gets them and uses them for some terrible purpose. Uh -huh. Why do you think some of these people go to a school and shoot up and kill 15, 16 people? You mm -hmm. can't understand. Why did they? Well, they were controlled by someone during that time. They lived so close to the devil, he just used them what he wanted. That's right. So if a person says, well, I don't, uh, I don't like this religion stuff. I don't like living close to the Lord. I don't like this. Well, this is what this is the danger zone you're in now. Mm -hmm. When you live close to the devil, he can reach out and just get you for some terrible purpose you wouldn't dream you'd do, see? And he, he does this. And if you have a mind for this, you can see this almost every day in the news media. Yes. You will see things like this happen where someone like had a spiritual fit and did something that looked like it was completely out of harmony with their person. People say, I don't understand him. Such a nice young man. Just yeah. recently a young man yeah. shot his girlfriend's parents right over here in Oklahoma. And we don't understand why he did this. He, he did this because he was controlled by another yes. spirit. That's mm -hmm. right. He got too close to the domain of darkness. That's and right. This is the liability you have. Well, Jesus yes. can heal that. Yes. Amen. Amen. He can take that away so you don't have bouts of wickedness. You have bouts, bouts of holiness. Amen. <laughs> so to speak, and you rise up and do an exceptionally good work yes. instead of an exceptional de evil deed. And they brought them people that were sick with a palsy. Our text says, Matthew 4.24 also mentions them that had palsy. Notice this diversity now, these diseases. Palsy is paralyzed. You see, it's paralyzed. They had all their members. They just couldn't use them. That was the <laughs> they had hands, but they just couldn't use them. Feet, they just couldn't use them. Their body had a body, but they just couldn't use it. You know, there are people that have capacity to think. They just can't, <laughs> can't think. <laughs> They have a capacity to, capacity to will, but they just will the wrong thing. They just, they're paralyzed, spiritually paralyzed. Well, sin does this to a person. In fact, Romans 8, 8 says, They that are in the flesh cannot please God. They're like paralyzed. They're spiritually paralyzed. They can't please God. You can get right down in the face of someone who's spiritually paralyzed and say, Look, the Lord says to seek God. Why don't you do it? And they're par like paralyzed. They can't do it. As the Lord said to praise God, now you should go ahead and praise God. They can't do it. They're paralyzed. Mm -hmm. and, but Jesus delivers from that condition. That's, mm -hmm. that's the point. Sin corrects. Jesus corrects that dilemma brought on by sin. And there were people that were lepers. Mm -hmm. They had a disease that like advanced. Mm -hmm. It got worse, worse, mm -hmm. worse. Palsy may not get worse, worse. You just, you may be no worse Ten years after you're first paralyzed, and you were when you first it happened. But there's a there's a certain aspect of sin that gets worse mm -hmm. and worse. <coughs> Leprosy, to finally it just consumes you. Lepers were cleansed by in Jesus' ministry. Mm -hmm. Second Timothy three thirteen speaks about evil men and seducers waxing worse mm -hmm. and worse. See, sin becomes more and more malignant and more consuming and more debilitating. I've seen people that uh, have noticeably deteriorated in the spirit. You can, you can just, you can almost see it with your eyes. They've de they went downhill spiritually. Mm -hmm. and it may look like it's utterly hopeless to see. 
Jesus healed the pulse. Yes. And Jesus can cure this downward decline that occurs in sin. <coughs> and there were people that were deaf. Mm -hmm. They brought to him the deaf here. Matthew 11, 5 said, Now there's a spiritual deafness. You may be very conscious of Christ at the present moment, and then your, your spirit may be sensitized, so it's like you sense that the Lord is speaking to you, but there are some people that they, they can't tell this at all. Mm -hmm. They can't sense the presence of the Lord. They can't sense He's speaking. They can't sense He's <coughs> calling. They have no sensitivity of this at all. Sin takes away your hearing. Mm -hmm. now, Jesus said one time to some people, that He was speaking to the people. But the, they, didn't, they didn't see anything in what Jesus said that required their immediate attention. They could just listen to him for a while and go home. Mm -hmm. It may have was no consequence to them. And he said this to them, John 8, 43, Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. Right. See, you will hear words that will be of such staggering import to you that you want to go about straightening your life out immediately. You will hear words of warning from Christ that immediately upon hearing them, you set out to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Other people hear exactly the same word mm -hmm. and, and they see nothing in it yeah. that needs to be acted upon. Mm -hmm. Why not? They're deaf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They can't hear. They're deaf. But Jesus can unstop deaf ears. And they also brought uh, dead people to him. He raised the dead. Remember when they sent John and the Baptist sent some messengers to Jesus to ask, to ask if he was the one. He, he performed some miracles and he turned back to him and said, Go tell John. And he said, The dead are raised. Go tell him. Go tell him the dead are being raised. Yeah. Well, see, sin killed us. Yeah. It rendered us dead before God. And Jesus, he... Uh, he quickened us, <laughs> mm -hmm. even when we were dead in trespasses and sins. Yeah. <coughs> two, one says so. Sin, he has all these different aspects to it, and Jesus came to correct it. Sometimes there were people that had multiple infirmities, like in Matthew twelve twenty two. There was a man who was blind and dumb. <laughs> And in Mark 7, 32, there was a man who was deaf and had an impediment of the speech. So there was a multiple. They had multiple. Mm -hmm. yeah, would you sense this, that uh, <coughs> sin has like multiple effects yeah. upon people? It's just not that you can't see. Something you can't see nor hear nor speak. You just completely incapacitated. Sin incapacitates you totally. But Jesus came to correct that situation. Now all of these there are various miracles brought on different kinds of uh, cases, shows the thoroughness of Christ's great salvation. Amen. He just didn't come so people could think right. Yeah. He just didn't come so people could do right. He just didn't come so people could speak right. Uh -huh, uh -huh. He came to correct the whole man. Yeah. Amen. All of it. A person may be satisfied if they can just keep doing what they do, but maybe think a little different once in a while, that's it. This is it. Yeah. All of the effects of sin have to eventually be expunged, or you cannot go to heaven. Yeah. If at some point, the ultimate point is going to be the resurrection of the dead. You understand? Yeah. But if, if at some point all the effects of sin are not removed, you're not going to get in. Yeah. They all have to be removed. Yeah. It starts now. Mm -hmm. And the Lord sort of trims you up and makes you suitable. And in the last of the resurrection of the dead, you'll get a new body and all the effects of sin will be once and for all gone. Amen. And they'll never be seen uh, or brought to mind anymore. Now, after all of these uh, anonymous people were healed, what was the response? Well, the first thing, the multitude, they brought the people. Now, these, these are the ones that brought the people. They wondered. They <laughs> They just marvel. <gasps> never seen anything like this. Some might say, we've never seen it on this wise before. They wondered. Well, at some point, a person does have to be brought to the point where they wonder, mm -hmm. marvel, speechless. They have to admit, I've never seen or heard anything like this before. You've got to get to that point at some time. You have to experience that. Mm -hmm. 
where you stand in the presence of Christ and it, so to speak, takes your breath away. Yeah. And you know that nothing like this can be done outside of Christ because he's not going to get much of you until you see this. Yeah. Until people see the absolute uniqueness of Jesus and what he does, they will not be prone to come to him. Amen. They wondered. Uh -huh. And they saw. <laughs> hey, what Jesus... What Jesus does to a person becomes apparent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People that don't even know him can tell something's changed here. Amen. They Amen. saw the dumb speak. Mm -hmm. They saw it. They saw the maimed made whole. They saw it. They saw the lame walk. They saw it. Mm -hmm. They saw the blind see. They saw it. Mm -hmm. They saw it. I would be highly suspicious of a work of God that couldn't be seen. Mm -hmm. I would, I would, call, I would provoke some doubts in my mind mm -hmm. that the Lord Jesus could work a great work in you and nobody know it. Yeah. This does not. Something's wrong with this kind of thing. That's right. Something's wrong with it. There's all kind of people. The only, the only thing that would lead you to believe that some people are Christians is they say they are, but that's mm -hmm. about all. You don't really see much evidence, any other any other kind of evidence. They look like they're lame like everybody else. Yeah. Uh -huh. They look like they're dumb like anybody else right. and deaf like anybody else. But they are, we're really not like everybody else. We're a Christian like you are. We just don't have any evidence of it. Yeah. Well, there isn't any such thing. I'm That's sorry. Right. Amen. There's no such thing. Is it be like saying he healed a lot of people, but they you couldn't tell it. They, they carried them back home. They carried the maim home, but they were healed anyway. You know, uh -huh. the deaf couldn't hear. They still couldn't hear, but they've been healed. They're going to claim it by faith. If God's done anything in you, it will be evident. Amen. You'll be able to know it. And this uh, this applies both inward and outward. And here's the interesting thing said about the people after this when they saw all of this happen. Said they glorified the God of Israel. <coughs> Not the God of nature. Nature doesn't tell you enough about God. It just tells you that God has eternal power and He's divine. This is the witness of nature. And that's not corrective. Neither one of those are corrective. See, in redemption, the God of Israel, that's what people He worked in. See, the, the, the people among whom He worked up, that's the God we're seeing. Well, see, they hadn't seen this God for a long time. It had been up until John the Baptist. It had been four centuries since God had breathed the word to humanity, even to Israel. There hadn't been any known prophet. There hadn't been any known miracles. If these people here hadn't known the Bible, what God prayed to them, would they have would they have praised? Yeah. If they didn't know what the Bible had said about the working of God in Moses and the prophets, what God would they give it to, to Hermes or Pluto or some of these Mercury or some of these Grecian and Roman gods? Who would they give credit to? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They gave credit to the God of Israel, God that work again. I can only imagine what this must have done to the hearts of the mm -hmm. contract. This, this God you read about back there, he's, he's at it again. He's yeah. working again. <laughs> I ought to have a longing for this. Yeah. For people to see this. The God of the Bible still working. Mm -hmm. Still working. They were able to associate Jesus with what God had promised also. God had leaked out information back there in the prophets about someone who was going to come. He's going to be called Mighty God. And he would be, he would know to choose the good and and uh, refuse the evil. And he would gently lead those that are with young. He'd be noted for being compassionate. <laughs> and all of a sudden, he said, "This, what he's doing, connects." He had pays to know the word of God, brother. Yeah. Amen. He pays to know the word of God. And you're Amen. able to connect who what Jesus who Jesus is with what he's doing. You're able to make these associations. Now I want to make a few observations about this. This account, which is a, a marvelous account, anyone that can do a lot of things always gets people's attention. Mm -hmm. right. Once in a while in the athletic world, they'll have someone who can be a super athlete in two different, two different <coughs> sports. Mm -hmm. Oh, they just, 
Sometimes you feel like him is that all? Let me tell you. Let me tell you about the captain of our salvation. About how many things he he amen. can do. Yes, yeah. amen. But in the world, if you can do two or more things, you're like a special kind of special kind of person. Well, that being the case, what about a savior that can do all things? Yeah. Amen. What about a savior like that? When Jesus is seen for who he really is, people will come to him. Yeah. Jesus, Jesus didn't go up into the mountain, sit down, sit down and send <coughs> messengers out to announce where he was going to be. <laughs> he just said that people, people knew where he was. Yeah. You can never get Jesus in the house mm -hmm. or get Jesus on the hill. You can never get him where people can know who he is. They'll come to him. Mm -hmm. This be what happened. When Christ's presence is known, it's the responsibility of people to come to him. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't sit down and have an announcement campaign. He was in the area. He walked along the shore of Galilee, sufficient time to notify people, I'm here, I'm back again. And he went, he went up into a mountain and the people had to come to him. If you aren't interested, if you weren't interested enough to come to Jesus, you, well, you just stayed sick. Uh -huh. That's just what happened. You just yeah. stayed sick. Yes. There, I could tell you that there are some people who had never made any advance because they just never took the time to come to Christ. They've just sort of squatted on the premises. Right. Yes. Jesus was made available to them. He was close enough to them. They could have reached out. Yes. They could have inquired. Somebody came to them and had some understanding. They could have asked. Uh -huh. some, someone came with a message. They could have believed, but they just didn't do it. Yes. So the condition wasn't changed. And there's this folly to sit on and try and figure out why... Why am I still this way? Why aren't things improving? Why aren't my problems going away? Why not get up and go to Christ? Amen. Mm -hmm. People who are impressed with Jesus not only come themselves, they bring others with them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the text says they went and they brought all these. They brought all these people. Uh -huh. I imagine they were like anybody else who's, who's out of Christ, that uh, they kind of tend to think about themselves. Only that uh, you know when you when you see Jesus, all of a sudden your vision kind of widens out, yeah. and you you get concerned about some other people too. And they brought the other people to Jesus, because mm -hmm. they had enough understanding about Jesus to know their condition could be changed. Mm -hmm. And Jesus has power over the total effects of sin. He does. If you uh, are discouraged. Yeah, that's an effect of sin. <clears throat> Grace doesn't discourage you, does it? No. The Holy Spirit doesn't discourage people. He comforts people. So, but Jesus has the power over that. Amen. Maybe you feel like you just can't, you can't do it, you can't do it. I've tried, I've tried, and I can't. Well, that's, that's the old tempter working there. Jesus can. Mm -hmm. Maybe now that you know that you can't, maybe then now this is the time to seek the Lord who can. He says power of the total effects of sin. If you can't understand, yeah, that's an effect of sin. It isn't because you just didn't go to school enough. That isn't it. It isn't that you've been like the ostrich deprived of wisdom. It's not. That's not what it is. This is the effect of sin. It's amazing how much you can know if you will get up into the mountain where Jesus is Amen. and get down, get down where He is. It's amazing what you can come to know and what you can realize. I've seen it happen, and in some of you, I've seen it happen. <coughs> I know you when you're kind of crude in your understanding, <laughs> but you're not that way now. What what happened? Jesus had a power over the total effects of sin, whether yeah. they're mental or whatever they are, and men must. Become adept in placing cases at the feet of Jesus. Like how, when you when you got a multitude of people, and a lot of different kind of sick people being brought to you, like just precisely how do you get someone down to the feet of Jesus? Mm -hmm. When there's a couple thousand people clamoring to get there, just how do you do this? Well, four men said we'd go up on a roof and take the roof apart and let them down. Well, it, these people had to do something like that. I don't think it was a, like a long healing line, <laughs> one by one. You have to learn how to present people to Christ. Some of us are a little bit clumsy here mm -hmm. on how to bring people to Christ. We just don't know how to, how to do it. But if you think enough about Jesus and get intent enough about getting to him, you'll, you'll, God will show you how to do this, to get the case through to Jesus mm -hmm. and set it down at his feet. <clears throat> and it's important 
to be where the master is actually ministering. <laughs> where he actually is doing something. It's important to be there. Sometimes it was in the temple. Sometimes it's in the temple he was doing something. So he even got in the temple when Jesus was in the temple. Hey, that thing changed. Sometimes he's in the synagogue. You get the synagogue where Jesus was at. There might have been another synagogue across town, but you wouldn't have gone over there. You had to get to the synagogue where Jesus was at. Sometimes it was on the seashore. Sometimes it was in a mountain. Wherever it was, it was in a desert. But if you could get where Jesus was actually doing something, you would be benefited. Amen. I know that seems kind of simple, but there are people that insist on going to churches where Jesus isn't doing anything. Mm -hmm. they just, and, they, and they wonder why they're not improving. And they wonder why they're discouraged. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they wonder why they wish things had changed. They can't figure it out. This is why Je if Jesus isn't at work in the house, then in the name of Jesus, get in the house where he is working. Amen. Go Amen. someplace where he is working. Amen. And people are advancing. And when seeing what Jesus does is impressive. Mm -hmm. Amen. It is impressive. Yeah. I love to do this. To sort of marvel at how far God has brought some people. Mm -hmm. not, not excluding my own person. Mm -hmm. I remember things about me that I don't talk about, see? Mm -hmm. And I realize how marvelously far I've come. Yeah. Amen. From yeah. when I didn't, didn't even have any interest. Mm -hmm. Like I wasn't even interested. Now this is an all-consuming passion. Amen. What's happened? Well, what Jesus did is very, very impressive. And when I, when I see what he's done in some of you, see, mm -hmm. this impels me to go forward. I'm encouraged very much by it. Because sometimes of all the evidence I have is what he did in me, sometimes the day's a little discouraging. Uh -huh. If all I got is me. Even though he's done a lot in me. Amen. But sometimes in a moment of time, they can like drift all, just go away from you. And you kind of, you kind of aren't are aware of it. But if you get your eyes open and look around, there's somebody close to you that he's worked in. Uh -huh. Amen. And it will ignite the flame of hope. Amen. In you. And people who come to Jesus don't leave like they were when they came. Right. <laughs> they may have been maimed when they came, but they weren't maimed when they left. And those who see what Jesus does do glorify God, who sent Jesus in the first place. Mm -hmm. And there is an environment in which special graces are received. Yes. Amen. There are places where special things can be done. You can't make these things happen. Jesus makes these kind of places. Amen. Wherever he is. In the, I remember one place in the <coughs> Gospels that says, And the power of God was present to heal them. Which means that sometimes that's not the case. Mm -hmm. and it's not my business to try and explain, figure mm -hmm. out what's the difference between the times. Uh -huh. I just want to be at the, at the time. Whatever, Amen. whatever the time is, I want to be there. Not, Amen. not try and figure out why it's not here, not there, not now, and where is it? Mm -hmm. Yes. And maybe you have to, uh, like the people in Syria, maybe you have to go over into Galilee to get it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, well, there's one of those uh, miracles that a lot of anonymous people. We're going to meet all these people someday. Yes. <laughs> Might be, uh, probably, it'll probably be very edifying to see how many, how many there were. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That day, just kind of a mass grace. Just a lot of things are resolved that day. We trust that our, our meetings will be something like that. Yeah. When the people gather together, there will be just kind of a great benefit go out to everybody. And maybe we don't itemize everything that happened, but... A lot of us were kind of crippled when they came. We found we kind of leap when they left. Yeah. He healed the multitudes by the Sea of Galilee while he was in a mountain. 